<laughs> oh, <laughs> what happened? Oh. I woke up, listen, I, I was like, I'm going to have a long day tomorrow. I'm going to get to bed early, which I did. I fell asleep at like 9.30. I was good to go. Unfortunately, I woke up at like 1.30. And then the mm-hmm. next thing I know, Fox and Friends first was coming on. Oh, no. I was on at four, right? Yeah, I know it does. <laughs> oh, honey. I'm still wide awake. And I'm like, okay, so do I get up and start working? Like, what do I do? And then Fox and Friends came on, and next thing I know, I'm out. Oh, no. <laughs> Are you going to go into work after this? Yeah. And okay. then I and then I, <laughs> I thought I was going to go into office at 7. Fortunately, my, my hours are kind of fluid. But uh, <laughs> but I, but I my, my goal was to go in at 7 this morning. And so I woke up at, like, 20 minutes to, to 9. Mm-hmm. And I was like, mm, can I wear my pajamas on Eden's show? <laughs> oh my gosh. You know what? If you are if you come on, if you want to come on the show on Monday, we're doing ugly sweaters for the Christmas special on Monday. So if you want to come back and wear Christmas pajamas, you are so welcome to do that. <laughs> I was like, I looked down and I was like, yeah, I don't think that's gonna work. Let's <laughs> gotta pull this together in 20 minutes. <laughs> it's interesting, but okay. Try to make make myself look like a little something, because but it was the struggle was was real. <laughs> Have you had any coffee yet? Oh, thank goodness! That's oh. why I was like two minutes late getting into the uh, getting into the, the studio there, the backstage, because oh. uh, yeah, I had to get the coffee. I had to get my coffee game up. I don't think, <laughs> I don't think your audience wanted to hear from me without my coffee. <laughs> Well, I'm so thankful you're here. I I, fl- I I freaked out for a hot second yesterday. I had a guest that was supposed to, that was scheduled to join. She joined and saw that we were live, and she hung up on me. <laughs> yes, she quote said she's not allowed to do live interviews, only pre-recorded. And I said what? And the organization I love. I'm not going to say their name on air. I love the organization, and I would do just about anything for them. But. I had that moment of, no, I've been teeing you up all week. Oh, dear God, no, let her be awake. <laughs> Not allowed? Oh, my gosh. Yes, that happened. So, you know what? The whole audience, that a great audience of support here at Common Sense America, they got to hear all of my Christmas rants and readiness for what's ahead and my excitement for Christmas and all of that. So, you know what? You just grab the coffee and you have coffee talk at the kitchen table. You you have to be ready for that. It happens. I mean, it happens. It happens. Yep. Yeah. I, well. I, I've had it happen before. It's not not fun when, it, <laughs> when, when, it, when it, a guest ditches you, but I've I've had it happen. <laughs> had it happen on my show for sure. I I, I usually over prepare, and you know that they, they get to hear me talk about the topic instead of the guest. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I my computer has all of these things open, all these links open. Boom, boom, boom. So hey. I, I just I just did that. I you know, but anyway, I'm glad you're okay. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm good. I, I wasn't okay. And you know, I found my, my alarm is on my phone and I was like, what happened? And I found my alarm. My phone was like on the floor on snooze. And I was like, when did when did I hit snooze? I don't understand what happened. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. And, and I must have literally just, just passed out because. Yeah, seriously. Well, you know what? I'm glad we're upon Thanksgiving and a Thanksgiving break. I'm noticing that people are already on travel and holiday travel and on their way to their destinations. And so maybe you'll get some, were you going to, are you going to get rest as well and kind of chill I out? I am. Uh, on the 25th, uh-huh. my sister and I will be off to Fort Lauderdale. Oh, uh, nice. Because on the 27th, we will be off to a seven day cruise to St. Martin and VR in St. Thomas. Oh, so, my goodness. Uh, I am, yes, we're, we are going to be resting. It's going to be a good time. Oh, yeah. I'm just a little jealous. Just a little jealous. That yeah. sounds amazing. We're oh, that's pretty awesome. excited. Yeah. Oh, good. Well, I've been teeing you up all week about your amazing buzz, amazing budget skills. And, you know, the kitchen table topics are travel savings. Yes. Also, Black Friday sales. 
Also, 2023 projections as the government continues to take our money away. So how do we save as we head into 2023 in this very dark winter where president doesn't even know where he is and he falls asleep at the podium? So what do we do about that? And that's My called God. cow plop. I'm coming up with new words. Instead of crap, I'm saying cow plop. That's good. That's good. Like that's good. My sister commented to me the other day that my my profanity has been much better since I left left teaching. And I and I used to say that one of the things that I didn't like about teaching was that I thought that my 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 mouth my potty mouth had mm -hmm. been much worse and part of the reason was because I was around it so much. Yeah. You know, I referred to it as a cesspool. When you yeah. hear that language all the time. Yep. It's hard to yep. not use that language. Yeah. Um, but anyway, I I digress. And, and you know, uh, inflate your Thanksgiving dinner uh, is up over overall twenty percent because of inflation. Twenty percent, okay. and okay. that's a lot of money. When you consider, you know, if you're having just a family of eight, I mean, I don't know about anybody else, but like my, my family is super huge. So yeah. when we tend to do Thanksgiving together, it's more yeah. than eight people. Yeah, it, it can definitely be up to 20 or 30 people. I have, you know, if we do the once you invite, you know, one family and you do like their their kids, you know, if you just do my aunt, and my uncle and, 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 and their kid, my mm -hmm. mom and us, her, her kids, you know, and then my sister's kids, that's two more. <laughs> that's a lot. So you you're saying. I mean? Right. So and then my, my sister. My mom's sister, uh, my mom's sister is deceased, but you invite her kids, obviously, mm -hmm. and her kids have kids. Like, mm -hmm. it gets to be a lot of people. That's a lot. That's a lot. It gets to be a lot of money. So what a lot of people are doing, you know, I, I saw a meme yesterday. It was so funny. I, I, I don't know how much it's true. Now, now, don't, nobody think this is racist. It's just, it's a joke. But it was a <laughs> meme that said, white people thanksgiving and black people thanksgiving and the white people thanksgiving had like a really short list of like what's on the list and the black people thanksgiving had a really 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 long list <laughs> they had like on the black people list like ramen noodles was on the list like we oh it was but it's true like we 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 have so much stuff at our Thanksgiving. And, and I've quite frankly been to both. I've been to my own family Thanksgiving. I've been to my white friends Thanksgiving. And that's quite frankly been my experience. I'm just saying. Yeah. But, but my, my, my point in saying that is that <laughs> a lot of people, what they're doing is instead of having, say, eight sides, they're cutting mm -hmm. it down to four yeah. sides. Yeah. You know, some, some people are doing a non-traditional type mm -hmm. Thanksgiving and maybe not even doing the turkey thing. Yeah, you know, maybe doing pizza, something like something like that, yeah. something way less expensive. But you know, or or cutting down the number of people that they're having at the Thanksgiving dinner. Maybe mm -hmm. just having, pardon me, maybe just having their immediate family, right, at their Thanksgiving dinner, so that they can cut down on, on their savings. You know, right. as far as Christmas goes, they're d doing. You know, maybe a secret Santa as opposed to, uh, or a Pollyanna as opposed yeah. to doing a gift for, for each and every person. Right. To, you know, mitigate the cost to everyone. Right. Right. So you're saying 20%, you said? Yeah. And 20%. that's a lot. You know, yeah. Thanksgiving dinner is, is pricey. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, luckily my mother is doing Thanksgiving uh, meal and all of the audience out there is going to get to see some of her famous recipes that she doesn't tell anybody. So we're going to be doing those, but she decided she's not going to do a full on Turkey. And I don't even like the smell or even the look or even be near Turkey. I, I can't do it. I can't do it. I have never been able to do Turkey. I do not like Turkey. And well, I said, you. And, and so that'll help with costs, right? Let's get, let's get a little ham. Let's get a, you know, a little chicken breast or something like that. Um, she's going to do her creamed mushrooms. She's going to do her sweet potatoes. She's going to do her stuffing and her mashed potatoes. But the turkey thing, that actually could reduce costs, right? Because turkeys are pretty expensive. It could. Now, ma'am, if you, if you go to, depending on, depending on the type of 
well melanated friends Thanksgiving you go to, mm -hmm. you might get some um some chitterlings, as I What's call that? them. Now, What's if that? from the South, chitlins, they call them. Now so, I'm gonna tell you, so some of your some of your listeners are probably laughing their heads <laughs> off right now. Uh, <laughs> they are they are pig intestines. Ew! Oh gross! <laughs> Now, oh. the reason why I'm mentioning this to you is because if you think that you don't like the smell Tur of turkey. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> Ask some of your friends. You're from the South. You live in the South, right? I'm not from the South. I live in the South. I'm right. not well, from the have, South. I'm a Northern have. girl in a Southern okay. world. Well, here, here's what <laughs> I'm going to uh, employ you to do. I ask some of your southern friends about okay. the chitterlings. Okay. I'll ask my husband. I bet you he knows. I bet he knows. Ask about the, the lovely aroma of, of the of the chitterlings. As Are they, they is it a cheaper way to eat Thanksgiving or is well, it just well to be honest, uh this is what they used to feed the slaves back in the day. Oh and it's like the leftovers of the pig. Oh. And some black folks for some reason still eat that mess. Uh, but yeah, and, and for Thanksgiving. Wow. I don't eat them. <laughs> but, but I do recall, you know, my family from my family is originally from Virginia, like my great grandparents. And I do recall being down south for Thanksgiving and smelling the horrific smell oh, it's that bad okay awful yeah but some okay. people eat them and swear that they're delicious mm -hmm. okay okay all right ask about it okay but i'll ask i'll ask hubby about it he's gonna watch this this evening he's outside he's out doing his fishing nets commercial fishing nets getting fish fish fish, fish. about it he's probably gonna laugh but yeah <laughs> i know it. It will. I you know it will. Get to him smell a turkey okay so let me ask you this. So that's our turkey meal. And that's also good to know as we head into Christmas too, because the oh, clearly the cost of the uh, food is not going down thanks to O Biden right now. So let's talk about black savings sales. I'm seeing, I'm, I, I looked at my email this morning, Macy's, Kate Spade, Belk, Zabar's, you name it, coach, all of them, they are pushing Black Friday sales now. And I even went into Walmart the other day to get my ugly sweater for Monday. And that place was packed and it wasn't even a weekend. And they had Black Friday sales, Belk last weekend, 65% off. I was going to say, they're doing it earlier and earlier. Yeah. Because I, I, I believe like, like the majority of... Uh, retail sales are made during that time period, during yeah. during the, the Christmas season. Right. Is when the majority of retail sales are made, but they seem to be hitting it earlier and earlier. Like even, even <laughs> Halloween was barely in the books before yeah. the Christmas decorations were up. And I was like, really? Yeah. I, mean, I was in Big Lots a couple of weeks ago and the Christmas stuff was already out. Yeah. And I was like, no, we're not, I, 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 I rebuke. <laughs> the Christmas decorations, just like when I was a teacher, I, I, I rebuked the back to school decorations. <laughs> what are we doing? No. So you don't like my Christmas tree behind me then? <laughs> no, I gave you a waiver. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, this whole house is macked out for Christmas. I even yeah. loved, I even loved your pictures on social media. Your Christmas, because you look so adorable. Like I couldn't not. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. You look like a, a Hallmark card, ma'am. Oh, thank you. Now I'm calling it Great American Christmas card because Hallmark is going too woke on me. So I'm yeah. switching everything up to Great American Christmas. I like it. I like it. Yeah. You could do your own line with just you on the front, like Oprah does. Like, you know how Oprah just puts herself, like, you gotta have like great self esteem to do that, right? But, <laughs> I, but I think like you should do that. Like, you're like Great American Christmas cards. And uh -huh. it's just like you, every, every, every card is just you in front of a tree. You That's holding a them up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think it would sell. I think you can do that. 
You want to be my branding? You want to do my branding for me? Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, I have to say thank you. I've been, I, I uh, stalk you on social media, even though we're friends. I, thank you so much for promoting Common Sense America. It means so much to me that you're doing that. Thank I you. have to, because it's good stuff, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. You know, I've had so many people in the short three months of this show say, how in the world do you get such amazing guests? And I said, you know, it's because I've had such an amazing career and I know so many wonderful people and so many powerful women who have surrounded me and my tribe. And you are one of them. So thank Aww, you. Thank you, sugar. Yeah, I mean it. I mean it. <laughs> I so mean it. Okay, so talk to me about this. I was just talking about stocking stuffers before you came over, showing some of my favorite books. But talk to me about some, you know, you know I did put, put up here. I'm going to put, put this up. This is a brand new book by Lisa Turkis. She is a faith-based author out of Matthews, North Carolina. She started the Proverbs 21 Ministries, I believe. Nice. Good boundaries and goodbyes. And I'll tell you what, that, that scripture, Proverbs 31, uh -huh. in my opinion, is one of the most mistaught yes. scriptures ever. Yes. I yes. mean, am I wrong about that? Mm -mm. You're not wrong about that. One of the most misused, like, I love how they totally skip over one through three. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're right. You're right. But what I love, I, you know, I'm going to be having Dr. Mark Harrison to talk scripture after your segment about the Marriage Act that just was passed and about Senators Burr and Tillis talking about how they voted for it. And I'm sitting here banging, banging my fists, banging my hand, my hand, knuckles on the doors of anybody who will listen. What about biblical marriage? What about traditional marriage? Are we going to be left behind, especially with Candace Cameron coming out this week saying great American Christmas, great American media is focused on faith and biblical values. And so as we're talking about biblical values and we talk about the Proverbs 31 woman, you know, I, that's a huge concern to me. That's a huge concern to me. And, you know, Dr. Mark Harris with Family Research Council said to me, he said, thank you for being so bold in your faith to talk about this. A lot of people are afraid to. You know, I, I don't know how you feel about this, but in my opinion, I, I'm wondering if the government should just completely stay out of the marriage game. Mm -hmm. I agree. Period. I've heard other people say that. And I do agree on that. Like, like, OK, if you want to have a, if you want to deal with the legalities of a partnership, mm -hmm. then let people have legal partnerships where you want to give someone the legal right to to be in the room during my hospital stay and make legal decisions for you. I mean, that could be uh, like some people to trust their sister to make those decisions more than her husband. Mm -hmm. Give your sister the right to do that. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. No, have, I do know what you're saying. Have a civil union if yeah. you want. To yeah. me, marriage is a spiritual relationship. Yeah. That was yeah. made by God, right? Yeah. Yes. It is very biblical. It is. It was made by but God. Like, why is the government even involved in that at all? See, that's the, that's the bigger question. The government is too much involved in our day-to-day -day lives. That needs to be, the government needs to step aside. It is, it needs to be powered back to the States in many senses. And my, my bigger question, here's my bigger concern. Separate, separate from the legalities piece. Why in the world do the cow plops of Hollywood have to go and name call Candace Cameron and call her a bigot for standing up for traditional marriage? What is their problem? Why are they getting so defensive? That's my problem. That's my issue. I'm so well, the name calling. Because the thing is, so it, like, data. I don't understand. Like, are we inclusive or not? Right. So that's what I look like. If you if you're gonna include mm -hmm. everybody, so yeah. like so so let let's exactly. be inclusive. We're like, exactly. Okay, so we if you why are you insisting? And this is what I I don't understand. Like, why yeah. are you insisting that all churches do what you want us to do? Mm -hmm. Why why are you insisting on that? Yeah. If yeah. You don't like it, it, to. To me, it's also like, 
these exclusive clubs that don't want women. Right, let, right. Let <laughs> men have their men stuff. Like, mm -hmm. well, I don't. <laughs> yeah. Like, I, like I, I, I really, I, I really don't care. Yeah. Like, men, <laughs> if these are all <laughs> exclusive men's golf clubs, yeah. Let them have their. It, it, it's like men go. It's like women going into a barber shop. Like, you know. Yeah, you're, you're, I, you don't belong. You don't. Be, there's places we don't belong, and I and, and I think that's okay. Yeah, uh, I just get concerned that at the end of the day, it's these these snotty nosed Hollywood elites thinking that they can dominate and depict society and the content, and yet my husband and I walk into a certain location. Yeah, we may be in the south, but wherever we are. I want us to be recognized as husband and wife. And right. I don't, it, and that I don't want us to lose that. I don't want us to be censored by these Hollywood elites thinking that they know better. I don't, because they don't. And neither does the Senate or the House for that matter and our sleeping president. But what I do know is biblical and is truth. And that is a marriage between a man and a woman. And I want to be able to defend myself and my husband if we would go into a certain location. Oh, we no longer service traditional marriage, biblical marriage. You know, I'm just I'm calling it out there because that's how crazy these Hollywood people are as they have been bombarding Candace Cameron for standing up for what she believes in. Right. And, and I, I don't think that I, I don't think what we're saying is that we don't want let uh, listen my belief is what you do is between you and your god because ultimately we are going to have to be accountable right, right? we are right individually right. we're going to yeah. be standing alone yep that's the bottom line yeah so what y'all what you what y'all do is what you do but mm -hmm. what you're going to do is leave us alone yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You know, yeah. you're not going to demand that we acquiesce to what mm -hmm. you're doing. Mm -hmm. We don't yeah. want to ac acquiesce to what you're doing. Yeah, and we shouldn't have to. Right. We're not asking you to acquiesce to what we're doing. Right. 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 We're not asking you to acquiesce to what we're doing. Yeah. Don't ask us to ac acquiesce. We know who we are. Right. What and the other thing I'm asking is, and I know that we've totally gotten off topic because I wanted to do kitchen table budgeting, but oh, you sure did. I'm sorry. Oh no, 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 no. I mean, I've been hyped up about this all week. And you know, I've had people private message me and you know, just say, you know, keep pushing. Your convictions are powerful. People need to hear this. And and that's the other piece of it. Have we forgotten about how to critical think? to really think through some of these issues, to talk these issues out. I know there are a lot of people that don't agree with me. They're still friends of mine. They're not going to not be friends of mine because I love them for who they are. I have many friends yes. that live in a yeah. certain lifestyle I don't agree with. They know it, but I still yeah. love them. Yep. But they don't impose, but they don't impose their lifestyle on me and I don't impose my own lifestyle on them. Well, you know, there's some people who are a little left of that thinking mm -hmm. that view the fact that we even think that way as hate. Yeah, I know. And, and that is, is a shame. Yeah. Because it, it's certainly not hate. No, it's not. It's, it's, it's certainly from it. not hate. It's just a fundamental disagreement on beliefs. Mm -hmm. and, and if we are going to be inclusive, then in my opinion, there has to be room for both. Yeah. Yeah. And, and this day and time. Yes. Yeah. I was going to say, and, and, and when you consider the times that we're living in mm -hmm. a, as Christians, then we have to understand that, that these things are going to exist yeah. and we have to understand how to, how to exist with both peacefully right. until jesus comes back yeah and that's gonna be soon i feel it i feel it in my bones and i'm not i'm not being light on that i really feel it i really feel it yeah but, uh, you know but i i think i i think the government needs to get out of the marriage business altogether i think they need to get out of a lot of businesses 
especially, yeah. and, let, and let's go back to our pockets. They need to get out of my pocket, your pocket, and every other pocket. I am fed, fed up with the Fed, fed up with our elected officials. I don't care if you're Republican. I don't care if you're Democrat. I'm sick of you all because you're allowing this cow plop to happen. So what yeah. do we do? What do we do? Yeah, yeah. And, and, you know, even though the Republicans got the House back, the only thing they're going to be able to do, and, and I, I hate to say this, like everybody that's oh so happy about Kevin McCarthy being the speaker, I, I'm not, okay, you know, I I'm not hyped about that. I, I didn't think, I, I don't think that he showed great leadership no. over the past couple of years. I didn't, didn't think that he stood up and spoke out when, when he should have. So I, I'm not hyped about that. I think we're going to have, you know, just a, a, a stalemate of a government and probably not get a lot done legislatively. Yep. Maybe he'll be able to put a stop to some inflationary measures that the Biden administration had mm -hmm. in, in mind. And, and maybe, maybe uh, inflation will, will go down a bit. Mm -hmm. But, you mm -hmm. know, even right now, we're kind of like, oh, Inflation's gone down from eight percent to seven percent. Yeah, but it was one percent two years yeah. ago. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So let me ask you that: Do you think people are tightening their purse strings because of that during the holiday season, or do you think people are just maxing out their credit cards and using up their savings to really get through the holiday season? Because that's yeah. what I'm afraid of. That's what I'm afraid they is. Are. And we're, 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 first of all, people keep saying, the media is saying we're leading to a recession. And that, that's terrible that they're saying we're leading to a recession because we are, and I said it, I think on the last show, we are in a textbook recession mm -hmm. already. And, I, you know, it, it's not good to keep telling the public that we're not in a recession because mm -hmm. we are in a recession. Right. And right. You're, if you look at what big, big corporations are doing, they are already tightening their belts. Amazon mm -hmm. is laying people I off. That. I saw that Christmas. When usually what Amazon is doing is hiring this close to the Christmas season. So what does that and tell you? Yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, when a company like Amazon is laying people off instead of hiring mm -hmm. around the Christmas season, that is not good news. Mm -mm. That's very telling, especially with being Amazon being Amazon. Right. That's exactly right. So, yeah. you know, when I heard that, my tummy kind of sank a little bit. Yeah. Because I'm like, that's not what Amazon is normally doing around Christmas time. Right. They're normally like saying all hands on deck because it's Christmas time. We're going to be really busy. And right. that is not what they're saying. So, but I'll tell you, at least it's been my, I don't have kids. Yeah. So I don't know what it's like, but it's been my experience that just parents in this day and age don't know how to say no, don't know how to say the budget, but the budget is tight. So we're not going to have as much this Christmas, whatever. And they will just, you know, do whatever to make their kids happy during Christmas. And I mm -hmm. think they're going to overextend. And if you look at the financial websites and things like that, that's what's being reported is mm -hmm. that people are extending their credit. Mm -hmm. And they're borrowing more money. And that is bad news. So on your dear Santa list, <laughs> I have one final question for you. Yes, on your dear Santa list, what is your top wish? Huh. Think My about that for a second. Like materially? Like, I, I, no, I would say yeah. I would say across the board because you have your your radio show, your podcast, ninety eight point seven, the coast. You are a commentator on Newsmax. You are out there. You are in front. You are talking about the big budget issues of today. What is affecting our economy? What's affecting the American family? What is affecting our kitchen tables? So. Your dear Santa list, as I put you in my uh, my Instagram story this morning, having a dear Santa list right next to you. What what would you think about? I will tell you, this is gonna be sound kind of crazy and a little emotional. Uh, my mom was diagnosed with cancer last week, and oh, Melanie, my diagnosis is good. But okay. my Christmas wish would be for her to go through her treatment well. Mm -hmm. 
And uh, it, the, the I was in, in the appointment with the doctor. She said, it's not a death sentence. This is very treatable and you can do well. And so my Christmas was, is that she does. Okay. That's it. Okay. That's well, you know what, as the Bowery mission inspired us earlier this week, being a beacon of light and hope prayer is the first thing. So yes, let's indeed. do it. Yep. Let's do so it. it. Okay. Well, on that note, I'm going to let you get to work, get some coffee in you. Yeah. I'm going to get a second <laughs> cup before I get off to work. All right. <laughs> I love you, my friend. Thank you love so you much.